Hello everyone, welcome to another collage episode of Art Whisperer 88. I have assembled some of my warm-up exercises on black tissue paper on my uh, Strathmore and I'm protecting the edges with my template. So the template serves two purposes. It defines the edge of the plate and it contains all the elements. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use my favorite Mod Podge. I don't use it straight out of the jar. I usually put some water in it. So I'd say about three tablespoons. And this makes it easier to mount my tissue. Now, if this were straight out of the jar, I would have a very hard time So the trick here is to have as little brush stroke as possible, especially for tricky shapes like this donut. Uh, it can get shredded if you're not careful. Okay, this way when I put a uh, initial coat of glue, it enables the tissue to stick right away. And then I finish it off with a top coat. like so and I'm not I'm not pushing on the paper I'm letting the the bristles of the brush glide on the paper let the brush do the work Okay, so this is the final. It's a very large warm-up exercise that I did on drawing paper. It's just a bunch of black circles. And it serves as a graphic element. And I thought it would be an interesting composition made of graphic elements. Okay, so this is the first layer of elements. I will allow this to dry. And then I will proceed to the next step. Oh, 
Okay, while well, my collage is drying on the side, I have here some uh, acrylic paint pens, and this is a gold, metallic gold. Now, I like this pen because it's, first of all, it's cheap, and because uh, I find the Poscas very expensive. And um, it does the job. Okay, I think this is busy enough. So it's just a series of circles done on the plate to provide some texture. So I'm going to let the um, collage dry and then I will proceed to the next transfer step. I am back and I think my collage has dried completely. Now I'm going to do a layer of yellow oxide I'm just going to do one color this time and hopefully it will pick up the uh, gold marker And again, I uh, find that when you are trying to pick up markers as a first layer, it's good to have a very thin, even layer of paint, as thin as you can. Now, this is the tricky part because the thinner the layer is, the quicker it dries. So you have to strike a balance between having it thin enough, but not too thin that it dries before you put the paper on. So that takes a little bit of practice. Sometimes the, uh, the time between you roll the ink or the paint and place the paper on. By the time you place the paper on, too late, the paint will have dried and it's not going to work. So uh, I just thought I'd mention that.
Again, I'm going to apply my scribbles. I'm going to try something different here. I'm going to cut some strips. I should have done this beforehand. I'm not practicing what I preach. strips and these will expose what's underneath Okay. Sorry about that. That was an oversight on my part. I should have cut the strips first, but I make these decisions at the spur of the moment because that's how I work. Uh, it's not the best way of working, but I learned by no mistakes. And when you change your mind so frequently and so quickly, it's hard to plan things out in advance. But I just keep going. So I hope this paint didn't dry, because if it did, there won't be any transfer, and it would be a waste of time. So I'm applying a good amount of pressure with the heel of my hand. And I will let this sit for about five minutes. couldn't resist taking a peek. Okay, I'm gonna let this wait a little more. Okay, let's see what we have here. OK. 
okay. Not too bad. It's not too bad. I was scared that the uh, paint would dry on me. Uh, as you can see, the edges are a little bald. They have bald spots. And that's because the paint dried too quickly. But I love the texture. Um, which actually this can help me plan the next layer. So um, I'm going to let this dry and then plan the next layer. I'm going to do a combination of Arctic This time I'm going to add a little water so it doesn't dry so fast
mixing it with a little turquoise. Now I could place these uh, stencils after I roll the color, but if I do that, I can't change my mind because uh, when I lay the uh, stencils down, I compose on the fly. So This allows me some time to change my mind. And as you can see, the oil resist is working. It's the oil content of the plate that is creating these textures. So I'm rolling very carefully because I don't want to make the stencils lift off. Okay. Again, here is the second layer with the yellow.
Okay, let's see what we got here. Give some interesting textures. Here's the second layer. I'm going to keep going and add a fourth layer. It sounds crazy, but I'll try it. Why not? I'm going to use my larger donut shapes because since I'm hoping it's the last layer um, I want to expose what's underneath as much as I can but at the same time add some additional color. Okay, let's see how this works out. going to use this brilliant magenta. I haven't used this color before, so it'll be something new. So I have magenta on the top. And cadmium red on the bottom.
Okay, here is the print with the second layer. And on to the third. Okay, it's been five minutes. Hopefully this is the last layer. Really cool. Check this out. Now that's a happy print, if I may say so. Very cheerful colors. Much like a circus. And the collage elements. You really don't even notice that it's collage because it's so far underneath the layers. But it's very happily integrated. So I will let this air dry and then recap. I may decide to try to recover this. Let me see. Decisions, decisions. So I do Arctic in the middle. And phthalo blue on the outside.
Now, since this is a ghost print, I will leave this on a little bit longer. I'd say maybe 10 minutes. And that will give me a chance to clear out my table. I'm going to turn on the desk fan, maybe it will help. Okay, I've had the desk fan on this paper for about, oh, I'd say 10 minutes. Let's see what we have. I think it does help. I think this is going to be quite a ghost print. Usually when it's a successful ghost print, the paper sticks to the plate. So what that means, it's picking up everything along the way, like a piece of tape. Very cool. I think this is a standalone print. Okay, there's a tiny tear here, but it's not very noticeable. Check this out. So I will air dry this again and then recap. Okay, everybody, here is my favorite part of the video, the last leg, where I can show you the finished product. So here is the first print up close. And I'm very happy with these uh, results. Now the texture here is more or less consistent throughout the print. That's because the paint was watered down a little bit. So you have the interplay of different layers, different colors, and I think it works very well. Again, it has a very mid-century modern look, which I am very fond of. So that is print number one. And here is the second print, which is a ghost print, which I think is pretty wild. Here is a close up. It has a very intricate detail, much like a map.
in fact, um, if I'm not mistaken, it would be a challenge to replicate this kind of image in an oil painting. Um, I think it would be a, a big production because of so many layers. So, uh, That's my second print, which is a ghost print. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you so much for coming along for the ride. Again, this is an experiment, so I never know what the end result will be. And I'm quite happy with both of these prints. And thank you so much for watching and for all you very kind subscribers who have lent some support to my PayPal to help keep this uh, channel going with uh, art supplies and production costs. I hope to see you next time.